Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to continue on with adding uh, uh, and subtracting actually of uh, voltages and currents. We're starting with adding here and uh, I've got another example here for you to look at and now I've got a couple of voltages here. This one's 100 volts. It's sitting at 30 degrees. I got 140 volts. It's sitting at 60 degrees. So I guess if you looked at these uh, just so we see what that looks like, you know, this one's kind of like this, right? 30 degrees off of zero and uh, this one would be a little bit more than that okay 60 degrees off zero something like that so I got two different phasers and they're at two different phase angles and this particular example they're not 90 degrees apart like they handily were you know for this particular one so what do we do when they're 90 degrees apart because when they're not 90 degrees apart because this formula here Pythagorean theorem it only works for right angle triangles, okay? It does not work for all these other weird triangles. So what if we end up with a weird triangle? And let's see what actually happens. And this definitely, this one definitely will be, you know, a weird triangle, okay guys? So we're gonna draw those phasers on this little phaser diagram. Here's my little phaser world here, okay guys? And we're gonna draw them. It doesn't matter what order you draw them, but I'm gonna order the, you know, draw them first this one first and then this one. So 100 volts at 30 degrees. Here's zero degrees, guys, and here's 90, okay? So 30 degrees is one third of the way up there. And I'm gonna make it 100 volts long, which is some arbitrary length, okay? So here's my 100 volts, and it's sitting here at 30 degrees. There's the 30 degree angle off of zero. And my other phaser is 140 volts and it's at 60 degrees. So if I drew it right where it belonged, guys, it would sit right here, okay? 60 degrees off of zero. It'd be a little longer than this one because the length of the phaser has to do with the quantity. In other words, if this is 100, then 200, a phaser that's 200 should be twice as long and a phaser that's 50 should be half as long. So this one's like 40% longer, right? And it's at 60 degrees, so it's gonna sit right here. And maybe I'll draw it in there lightly, okay? So it's something like that, okay guys? There's the 140 volts at 60 degrees. But in order to add phasers, I've gotta move them tip to tail. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna draw it right here. This is gonna be my 140 volts, and it's gonna be sitting here at 60 degrees. And it's, you know, 60 degrees off of this imaginary zero right there, up to 60. All right, guys? So there's my two phasers. Now, the resultant is going to be a line that starts at the beginning of the first phaser and ends at the end of the last phaser. And this is gonna get a little bit messy, okay? But here's my resultant, something like that. that brown line right there. That is my resultant. And this is not a right angle triangle. And so we can't really, well, we can't at all use Pythagorean theorem to calculate it. So how are we going to calculate it? And the way we will calculate it is by figuring out what's going on with this phaser as far as its horizontal component. We're going to call this you know, it's the adjacent side, guys, of this red line, and this is the opposite side. But we're going to call this the horizontal component, all right? And we're going to call this little guy right here the vertical component of that phaser. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for this one, okay? This is going to be the horizontal component of that phaser, and this is going to be the vertical component of that phaser. But, and... You know, we could calculate it because um, it's the adjacent side and I can use SOHCAHTOA to calculate it because this horizontal side, if it's the adjacent, guys, well, the adjacent, if I look at SOHCAHTOA, it is the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle, okay? That's because, you know, the sine of the angle, guys, is the, uh, is the um, whoops, this is wrong, okay? Um, like I said, I make plenty of mistakes. Opposite over hypotenuse, cosine of the angle, adjacent, hypotenuse, okay? And so I'm using this 
formula. We're going to calculate the adjacent side. We're going to transpose it. There it is. What that means is the phase, the uh, the uh, horizontal component, guys, is the phaser times the cosine of its angle. And the phaser is 100 volts, and its angle is 30. So I could calculate that horizontal component. It is going to be 100 co times cos 30. Let's do that for a second here. 100 cos 30. That little horizontal component there, guys, it's 86.6. Now, I can calculate this horizontal component as well. That's going to be the phaser, the hypotenuse, times the cosine of its angle, times the cosine of the angle. So it's going to be 140 cos 60. So it's going to be, let's try that, 140 cos 60 equals, it's going to be 70, guys. Okay, so now we have this bit and this bit. Now I can add those two together to get this big horizontal component for the resultant. Okay, guys? And I could calculate the vertical component here. It's going to use sine. It's going to be the phasor times the sine of the angle for this one. And I could calculate this one. It's going to be the phasor times the sine of the angle for this one. And then I could add them up and I would get, you know, this big vertical component right here. Okay, guys? And uh, it all seems really cumbersome. So the way we actually do it, guys, is we use these two formulas right here. Instead of calculating them all individually, we just calculate the big horizontal component all at once, the big vertical component all at once using this, you know, trig. All right, guys? And so I'm going to do that here. This horizontal component, I'm going to switch back to brown here. If I wanted to calculate, you can see that it's going to be 86.6 plus 70, but if I wanted to calculate it all at once, the horizontal component for the resultant is going to be phasor 1, 100, times the cosine of 30, plus phasor 2, 140, times the cosine of 60. And if you have the right calculator, you can punch that in in one big long line. And if you don't have this calculator, guys, this particular calculator, you should have it because it is the way to go. 100 cos 30 plus 140 cos 60 equals. That is 156.6 long. All right, guys? Now, I can do the exact same thing with this vertical component. I don't have much room to do it, so I'm going to do it right over here. The vertical component, guys, it should be, let me switch to pink. Phaser 1 times the sine of angle, 100 sine 30 plus 100 sin, 140 sine 60. All right, guys? And so if I actually do that, let's do it right here. 100 sine 30 plus 140 sine 60. I see that that side is 171.2. Okay, so this whole line, 171.2. This whole line right here, guys, 156.6. All right, and what that's going to allow me to do is calculate the length of the result and we're going to do that right down here with our nice red pen because the result and it's going to be Pythagorean theorem it's going to be the square root of 156.6 squared plus 171.2 squared all right and I know I'm going fast here guys and you're going to find out that this whole course is going to go fast okay because this is review Okay, so hopefully you're going like, oh yeah, I remember this. Okay, 
because uh, I can't, you know, start again right from the beginning here. I have to go fast in order to get through all the material. Plus, this is YouTube, so, you know, it's terrible. 232 volts. All right, guys. So, this 100 plus this 140 is 232 volts if I did it correctly. And if I didn't, you know, that would suck. I'm pretty sure it's okay, though. Uh, I'll double check it after this okay guys but that's what's going on there now there's one more thing we could calculate and that is the phase angle the uh, we're gonna use uh, co uh, tan like I always do guys and uh, I'm gonna use blue here we're gonna calculate it right up here uh, and I know this is a big mess here guys but I'm using you know whatever space I have right guys so uh, The tan of the angle is the opposite over the adjacent, guys, which means the angle is the uh, opposite over the adjacent. Inverse tan, okay, guys, it's always going to be that way. And so it is the opposite side, which is always the vertical component, guys. It's 171.2 over the adjacent side, which is always the horizontal component, 156.6. All that shift tan. And so I'm going to pile that into my calculator here, guys. 171.2 divided by 156.6 equals shift 10 equals 47 degrees. All right, guys. So it's equal 47.6 degrees. All right. So here's my answer. You know, the question was calculate the sum of the two. Answer 132.132. 232 volts guys at 47.6 degrees and if I drew that as a phaser you know it would literally look like this it's uh, 45 degrees out of phase something like that okay where that is 45 degrees and the effective value of voltage is 232 volts now the last thing I'm gonna say about this guys is this if you're adding multiple phasers you can just make the formula longer so this formula right here horizontal component hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle plus the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle plus okay so phaser one cosine of its angle plus phaser two cosine of its angle plus phaser three cosine of its angle plus phaser four cosine of its angle I don't care you're only ever gonna see from me at least we're only going to add up to three. All right, guys? So you can just add a third phaser to calculate the horizontal component of the whole mess. And you can do that for the vertical component as well. And then once you have the horizontal and vertical components, I mean, it would look like this, right? If I had three phasers, guys. One, two, three. Okay, let's say those are my three phasers. The resultant would look like this. We're, they're all moved tip to tail, right? This is just an example. The resultant, I don't want to use that one, would look like this, right? Starts at the beginning of the first one, ends at the end of the last one. So there's the resultant right there. It's going to have a vertical component, all right? And it's going to have a horizontal component. All right, guys, and so those orange lines there, I don't know if you can see them, that's the right angle triangle I'm dealing with. Now, all these phasers all have their own little horizontal and vertical components. We don't care about those that much. We're going to calculate the big horizontal component and the big vertical component using these two formulas, okay? Once you've done that, you can calculate the resultant. Once you've done that, you can calculate the angle. All right, guys, so... I'm going to do one more example, uh, probably of three phasers, and then uh, that'll be it for adding of phasers, okay guys?